Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Siemens Multigas Plus medical instrument. Uh, yes, of course, from a hospital. And uh, I think it's from Anastasia, uh, where they uh, give um, patients all sorts of gases. And then the idea is... Let me try and show you guys this. See, there's a tiny little filter here. So I think this instrument kind of smells <laughs> on the gas the patient gets. And then we got these two little tiny, tiny tubes that goes into this chamber. And you can take this out. And then, oops, see there's two, two other filters. And the idea is, of course, you can see here if there's liquid in here, then you need to replace this. So this is something you need to monitor. And then there's probably a pump in here that will change the air, make it flow around here. And then the idea is it samples whatever gas it is the patient gets. And... Um, Yeah, we need to open and have a look. We'll have, have, of course, those two little rubber gaskets. I mean, there will be, of course, two of these up there. The one is here at the moment. And the power on off. And then, exactly. See, here on the side, there's a little warning label. Explosion hazard. Flammable. And, and that's, of course, because oxygen can make things flammable. I would think so. Right. So of course you supply it with some yeah main supply. There's a connector, Siemens specific instrument, and we got a software upgrade of some sort. Earth connection, the classic, and here some vacuum hose connection, and a little information here about the model number. Siemens Medical Systems, yada, 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 and all that. And in here we have a filter. So, there's a fan. Yeah, but let's see if we can figure out how to open this one and see what is inside. So it was a little bit difficult to pull out the cover because of the EMC shields so this these makes a very good electrical connection all the way around so that no electronics emit any kind of noise so all that is uh, pretty good here at the front top front we have the power supply it's very nicely Done high quality power supply. See here's mains entry. There's a probably a switch and it's probably connected to this on off switch right there. So maybe that's a little relay or something. And all the outputs from the power supply go down to the main controller board. I will show this in a minute. That will be the two hoses connecting to the sample and they go here so here we got two extra filters and they're neatly marked so the idea is probably you need to change these filters now and then i think you just pull push pull something yeah here we go oh you unscrew how neat so that will be a little filter you need to replace and then um, we go down here I think this is a pump or something and there's quite a lot of special things going on here I can't wait to try and pull all this apart so we will see what is going on here is uh, the, the external vacuum. It's also connected to some 
maybe there's some valves or something. And another little filter. Look at those solenoids. Two input, one output kind of solenoid valve. And here's really cute. <laughs> oh, what the heck? It goes all the way around and there's some other funky stuff going down there. We need to look at more carefully when we go on the other side. And there it is, maybe one of the gas sensors from Berkeley, California. We got this one with nice serial numbers and everything, super serious stuff. So there's a uh, heated and uh, yeah, heater and uh, some uh, special. Yeah, th those are really special. I think this is for oxygen. We got some other sensors and some other stuff going on here. Oh, this can also this can also look like a pump of some sort, right? <laughs> this this is just so much going on here. Maybe a little temperature sensor and make a big flat cable here that connects to another super cool sensor here it says a lot about what it's doing yeah definitely i need to pull all these things apart so we can look much more deeply temperature sensor as well right or why are they so thick this is maybe to add heat so that will be a power resistor and then all the thin ones, they will be sensors. So that will be the side view. Power supply here. Going down to the main board. It's just so beautiful. The design here. Oops, that is not how it's supposed to be. And that one, what is that thing doing? So we've got three hoses going into that unit. So that is the main controller board, and it's full of all analog and digital and we got two microcontrollers 68332 eprom another little memory chip another microcontroller probably some pressure pressure or vacuum sensor here and look at that one and two so lh0070 linear technology high precision 10 volt reference hapa hapa nice lovely lovely love it but why are we having two of these and that, that is not normal I would have expected them to be not like that. And another circuit board here. What is that doing? It is just so much full of electronics. Maybe this is, yes, that is controlling that thingy. Yeah. I want to see if we can get all this apart. So those two black containers, they just look like this and they're completely sealed. So I think this is the vacuum, the external vacuum input. And then vacuum just go through here. So what is the point? Is, there, is it if there's any kind of water or liquids it goes into here? 
those are really weird and they're just standing here so you can just take them out so then there's another little problem if you see this little motor right there so this little motor here on top of this we had this little pump gearbox system and i just barely touched it and then boing off it came so it's looking like it's probably just sitting there with a magnet all the way around so but how is this see this hole goes to the shaft of the motor probably just try and put it on again when i take the motor out, out obviously but that is some oh everything is so that one was definitely broken well well that's how it goes and what exactly is this so from the from the pump we got this long yellow wire i mean why would you want to do that i really want to see if there's any trick here it's just because there's a very very little hole here and then a long pass so this, so this has something to do with with flow they want to limit the flow or load the flow in a known way isn't that a funny thing yeah so you have a pump and then this then you have a known flow <laughs> ah, look at that i found another one right next to it but it was just hidden behind all the hoses this is doing exactly the same thing but here there's a big bigger hole in it so by switching between these two with the solenoids they can change the load of this uh air airflow it's really a fascinating way to do all this so i'm trying to get all the different hoses out of the way here so we can see what is going on with all the solenoids and all the thingies so this entire assembly here is mounted on little rubber vibration dampers so that motors and pumps and all that is not causing a lot of vibration and, and annoying sounds so i'll try and see if i can get all this out without breaking anything yeah, we've got some still some cables stuck so of course we got a ground wire when everything is in see little rubber thingies of course there's a ground wire so now we got this little pump and one sensor so this sensor is the 4750 and then there's another one here a 4710 and this one is of course much more complicated i can't wait to see what is inside that one look at all that stuff yeah and i think this one is there's also a defect right here look at this one yeah this can't be this is not right. Okay, it's, oops, no, it is not. This one rotates. Well, maybe it's not a problem. You just glue this in. Well, well. So that is the little pump unit. It seems like, think. You're supposed to take this and somehow like that and then click but it's see <laughs> this is not so this can't be right i think i will go back to the sensors in a little later point in the video but this is definitely a super cute one 
Andros Analyzers Inc. There's a pressure sensor. Those are definitely keepers. Little pneumatic two wave valves. And they say, uh, yeah, 12 volt DC. I mean, that is a good, good, good score. Let's look a little bit on the controller board. It's really beautiful. The layout and the, the way that everything is done. It's, it's quite clear. This is quite old. I mean, if you look at the SMD components, this is 1206, or the the smallest one. <laughs> I kind of I kind of like that. So this is super easy to uh, hand solder and hand debug, but there isn't any, uh, you know, debugging wires or any. Any kind of uh, poking around wires, nowhere really. Well, let's look at the other side. Silk screen info on all the important test points. Quite a lot of uh, test points. And what they're doing here with these little rectangles. So that is a copper equalizing. So the board is not going to flex too much when it's heated up and cool down during the process. This is probably a problem. See, somebody hand soldered this uh, pressure sensor and forgot to clean. Well, this could actually be why it was uh, thrown out because that sensor definitely is not working. So you need to clean because moisture will affect stuff like that. And look what I found, one, one little hand mod, neatly done with Teflon on all that. Uh, yeah, this is, this is from 98. The design is from 98. And I found a lot of ICs from 97. Let's look a little bit here, what else we got. So I removed the label. So this is a 27C something. So this is, they made these one-time programmable uh, EEPROMs. Well, that's of course RAM. I don't know what that one is called DPS something, all 97C. And here's another little OTP EEPROM for that one. And a little bit of RAM. So I think these can run in 8-bit or 16-bit mode. So as you see here, this is 8-bit mode. And over here it's 16-bit mode. So that is also quite neat. A little bit of analog devices. Yeah, it's, it's full of analog circuits, obviously. I haven't found the layer in indicator so i don't know how many layers we got yeah, it's also handwritten up here 98 so this is the external interface from the back side and look at that we got some optical up to couplers and a little DC DC converter for isolation and then I guess the rest here is connected to the external world this is quite typical for um, medical for good isolation to yeah, patients and protect everything and also look at that those are feed through filters and DC isolation, see there's another little transformer right there. And see, this is RS232. Well, well, there you have it, little multi-layer board. 
here is the power supply as you see here a 12 volt 5 volt minus and plus 12 volt this is very very useful for all sorts of uh, tiny retro pcs they don't really use that much power and for all the smaller pc boards you need all those voltages so this is a perfect part for stuff like that so another really cool keeper <laughs> all those stamps what happened here and uh yeah let's play a little bit with the different sensors so this was the other one and this is called servo mix o2 transducer whatever that is and we got three ports but two are connected together like that and then there's a little controller board of course this is also from servo mix and then this is how you interface their sensor via their board so this looks definitely like a, an analog signal conditioning amplifying board we got a little bit of calibration there i guess so it's nothing super fancy well, I want to try and open this uh, sensor and see what is inside this uh, this thing. I opened this fantastic sensor and uh, we got a little therm temperature sensor down there. Let's see, it's thermally connected to the to the housing. And then look at that. We've got two optical sensors up there and then in here i don't know if you can see can you see something is something is moving down there let's get a little bit of light and let's try and focus in that hole and then i move it see flippity floppity there's a little mirror maybe maybe it's con controlled by these two wires and then it maybe flips around and measure somehow the density of the air i mean really if you know the density and the temperature how can you use this to transduce something <laughs> i want to try and input something here and see what happens maybe oh we can actually open this a little bit more look inside this sensor so this big field here is a big strong magnet and somehow the gas goes into this chamber and then there's this little thing that hangs here two electrodes goes to something here in the middle we got these thin glass thingies i don't know exactly what is going on here maybe i should try and take some close-ups see here we go but this is some out of this world sensor So it's, yeah, I don't know. How is this working? But it is definitely beautiful. I don't even dare to touch this. This wire here is thinner than a hair. You can barely see it. But I mean, I really love opening all these sexy medical sensors because they're just full of funky stuff. Now, I have investigated a little bit more down this hole oh, and you can actually see it now so there's a little infrared LED down there and this one shines light to that mirror and then when the mirror moves 
it shines light back to those two detectors. And they are, of course, opposite directions. So you get a positive and a negative uh, signal from this little solar panel, depending on where the light hits. So now comes the fun thing. So this is a strong magnetic field. And I have now a my little diode tester. This one is testing it very few milliamps. But if I put a little current here really, really carefully, let's try and see what happens to the mirror. Oopsie, it moves. And it moves to one side. If I do it like this, and then I now I swap the polarization, and now it moves to the other way. Isn't that fascinating? So it is, of course, flippity floppity and something like that. Maybe it's measuring the time or the. I don't understand how. How the content of oxygen in this chamber can affect how this little this little glass thingy is moving, but. I will definitely go and Google this because I think this is a very, very cute sensor. So I went online and did a little bit of Googling searching for this Servo Mix O2 transducer and I found quite a lot of information and a, a YouTube video that explains a lot about how this sensor works and with the little glass things and the magnets and all that kind of stuff. So I will put in some links so uh, so you can read a little bit more about this fantastic and very special sensor. Let's try and have a little look at some of the other sensors. So this one is called Andros Incorporated, Berkeley, California. This is a model 4750 and we got three little gas connections up here. We got this, uh, the interface connector right here. There is a sensor cable going somewhere, a very important adjustment screw, a heater and a little serial EEPROM for some calibration data. Right there you go. And uh, they try to isolate it with some foam. So I'll try and uh, open this one and we're going to have a little uh, look inside. I don't know exactly what to say. Um, but I'm a little bit nervous about this glass wool. This is something you should not touch. Can you see those tiny little... This is very good for thermal isolation. So there's definitely something going on here with some thermal. And uh, I believe there's maybe a little microcontroller or something. I don't know exactly how this one works yet. Got some analog circuits. I'll have to take this away and be very careful how I do that. Well, look down here. There's a little stepper motor, and this one sees it's opened and closed, so it can can do something. But what is it? It opens and closes for. I haven't yet figured that out. But I think I want to open it a lot more so we can see a little bit more. So this is. Oops. Look at that. So what is this? Some sort of a reflector or something in here? Because I don't see any electric... Oh, oh dear. There is. So this is the heater. And it's painted black here. Because this one is the emitter. And then... Ay, ay, ay. Look at that. So there's a filter of some sort here. And then you can open and close this one. Wow, how cool is that? And then, when you know where you are, because of this is a stepper motor. Okay, then you have a detector sensor array. 
And there, you can even see a little bit through that glass. And then in here we got quite a lot of detectors. So they sense infrared. Wow, wow, wow. Let's try and open this a little bit more. Oh, we got two different glasses. Oh, so in that test chamber, we got infrared transparent glasses. And then look at that detector array with different filters. Some are red and some are green or something like that. And they are, yeah, they are marked with some different marking codes and all that stuff and different angles. I mean, this, if this is not sexy, I don't know what is. <laughs> Ah, there's a little sensor, temperature sensor there as well. Ay, 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 this is nice. I really always enjoy looking inside medical sensors of whatever type. They're always so fantastic. So what exactly is going on with those sensors? They go somewhere. Probably all those different... Uh, amplifiers here we got four amplifiers and here we got four amplifiers and and all that kind of stuff and that is just a an analog multiplexer or something like that right and then it's uh, just scanning around everything and uh, <laughs> I'm super happy I really hope you are just as excited as I am because this is nice huh I can't even stop laughing. This is so fantastic. Let's try one more little experiment with this glass. See, you can you can see here with the thermal camera. My finger is here. We can see through it. Thermal transparent glass, and that is very very special. Normal glass can't do that. Just saying. Let's try and play with the last sensor, and that one is also Andros. It's a 4710. They don't really say here what kind of sensor technology this one uses, but again, there's a heater. So it could be all sorts of cool thermal imaging just like the last one maybe there's also a funky long yeah you see so that is the emitter the light source of the signals so this one goes in here and then oh here we can probably just look in in this end here <laughs> what the heck is going on here? So, okay. Ah, now I see. So our sample goes through here. And then there is... See, we can even see through here. Oh, we, there's even some optical illusions. How about that? And then... We got some copper, and uh, what is that copper doing? Other than there is a temperature sensor right there. See, a little springy, springy. That will be the temperature sensor to that one. And here is another pressure sensor. So we know now the pressure, we know the temperature, and then we can emit we can even see some sexy sensor in there. I'm gonna pull this a little bit more apart. Aha! So this motor 
It's probably just a shutter opening and closing for this heat source. Oops, be careful about that. Yeah, let me open a little bit more. So I am a little bit more deep into this one. Remember, this is where the thermal emitter is. And there's another heater here. And Ooh, this is also some nastiness. I think what exactly is <laughs> what is this oh and there's another little wire here we got a lot more funky stuff going on here oi 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 I did not expect this. That will be all sorts of different ranges of infrared. Wow, so the emitter is still heat, but wide band heat. Remember, this is the emitter. And then you have all these different filters. And for some reason we want to heat up here so it's not ah uh, we preheat the the mirrors or something like that and then this is probably a sensor for this for this assembly somehow i think i mean i have never seen a filter of different infrared bandwidth like this before i am totally impressed again it just this is a gift that keeps giving I was able ah, to pull ah. this up this little screw i pulled there i probably don't want to take that out anyway because this is going to make me lose all the different little glasses here in here we have a little temperature sensor for this little piece but what i think is look at that oops those two pieces of metal, they go together around the glass, around the filters. And there's even a closed, see there, it's a closed room with a little glass there and there. And then a heater and a temperature sensor. So it's controlling the heat of the filters as well. Oy, 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 they are going all the way. And then there's another little glass there. And I don't know how can I get in there. And then there's a motor somehow. Oh, here we go. There's one screw that will let me proceed into the secret chamber. Aha, one screw. And there you have the emitter, and this is the assembly. And see, there's another glass, and there's another glass. And obviously they don't want dust and particles to go into anything here. Well, this is one crazy sensor. A pretty crazy idea. Here's what I want to do. I want to see if I can detect anything with this one and my thermal camera just to see what happens so first here's the sensor at the end of my finger so it's turned off okay so just give it one little volt or something like that see now it shines really fine it's 0.3 watts i don't think it needs to be that powerful but just to see what happens so i'll take this little wheel here and i'll hold it here in the front and let's have a look what can we do see the green is not transparent that one is not transparent nope that one is looking like blue 
Mm. I mean, this is a completely different type of infrared that is not visible by my camera. What you see here, the reason why you see something, that is a reflection because there's a, there's a shiny surface. As you see here, it reflects light on the front. So that means if I have it like this, and then I just hold it like that. See, here we go. I can make it reflect something, my fingers or my face or whatever, right? Uh -huh. So very, very different wavelength of thermal imaging. It's definitely not <laughs> sensitive to my camera. I, I did not expect that. And here is the pressure sensor. See, there's some gel down there. And then there's a little, uh, I think it's a, like a piezo element and a... Uh, thermocouple or, it's, or something. No, th th this is a strain gauge, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just a thin plate and a strain gauge. That is how it works. And the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And here you go. So that will be positive and negative ground and supply for that uh, strain gauge. Probably just go to the connector, right? But what else can we see uh, here? We got another one of these linear technology uh, LH0070 10 volt uh, super reference, and we also got um, yeah some up amps and uh, all that, a little um, serial EEPROM with all the calibration settings and goody thingies, and then here we go, this fantastic sensor here handles this wide band odd range infrared what kind of a chip is that can i maybe pull this out and get it to um find a, a type number or something we got four ultra thin wires and two thicker wires going to this sensor can now see what's going on here. Look under the chip. There's a Peltier. There's a Peltier element under that sensor. Now it makes sense. Of course they're cooling it down for higher sensitivity. Oy, 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 this is some fascinating technology. Unfortunately, I am not able to look up anything cool when it comes to this Peltier cooled infrared wide band sensor thingy. Look at the way it's mounted in the in the case is also a cooler here. And then this is of course to make the internal Peltier working. Because if you try to cool something down in there, you're going to heat up the outside, and then this outside here is connected to this one with nice heat sinks and remember there is a fan in the box as well right so but that is all i wanted to show you about this fascinating medical thing i hope you had a little bit of fun see you soon bye bye